Hi, how's it going? Hello. What's going on, everybody? Thanks for joining. We're just getting set up here on Facebook as well. And it looks like we are good to go. Yep. All right, look at this, James. We got started on time. <laughs> Doesn't appear to be any technical issues, though people can correct us if we're wrong on that. But I think we're good to go here. All right. All right. So as always, thanks for joining us for our Behind the Counter show. We do this once a month on the third Thursday of every month at noon. We're live on Instagram at Gasper's Best, and we're live on Facebook uh, on the HB Pharmacy Facebook page as well. And we like to share candid conversations with practitioners. Um, we've interviewed plenty of other physicians, dietitians, other people in the space. Um, and we also try to have you know more practical conversations like, okay, Thank you, Yair, yeah, for letting us know about the sound. Appreciated. Uh, that was an issue last time. So we try to have practical conversations. You know, like, okay, yes, obviously we know theoretically what's going on with health and all of that kind of stuff. There's a lot of theory out there, but what can we do that's practical in reality? So today we are going to talk about something that people may have forgotten about with the pandemic going on, but um, pandemic or no pandemic, seasonal challenges and seasonal allergies are always a thing. Absolutely. Um, now, James will. James is our, our pharmacist, and he he'll get into this in a little bit. Face masks may, um, you know, change things a little bit, but ultimately, there are still a lot of people who are going to experience some challenges with seasonal allergies and also pet allergies, even too, mm -hmm. which is an all year round thing. So, let's get started. And as you guys uh, know, as we go here, feel free to chime in at any point and ask any questions, and we'll answer them live here too. If it's after the fact that you're watching, comment and we will get back to you. Or you can always contact us at the pharmacy at 201-997-2010 or visit us at gaspersbest.com, G-A-S-P-A-R-S-Best.com. So what are allergies? Now, we're talking strictly seasonal here today, but it's kind of similar in the other sense of dietary sure. allergies and that kind of stuff too. But seasonal allergies, specifically or pet allergies, Essentially, your body is reacting to what it thinks is an intruder in your body. Right, James? Well, it is, it is technically an intruder. Sure. It's just that your body overreacts to sure. it. Sure. Okay, that's and, a good way to put it. So, you know, uh, body is overreacting to it. It's like, oh my goodness, what is this thing that's attacking my body? Right. And trying to literally decimate what's coming. And in the process of it, it's actually hurting us a bit more right for sure so yeah. yeah as james said it's actually a good thing that your body is responding in some ways because that's what your uh you know immune system is designed to do it's designed to protect your body from unwanted intruders the challenge is when it comes to stuff like pollen or pet dander you know it's a complete overreaction and you want to try to limit that in your body because it causes some you know discomfort and other issues so today whether we're talking about seasonal allergies, seasonal challenges, hay fever, all of that kind of stuff. Broadly, we're referring to the same reaction of your immune system to a potential intruder, or in this case, an overreaction to a potential intruder. Um, now, throughout the spring, throughout the summer, and even into the fall, there are different types of grass, different types of pollen in the air that can actually cause these reactions. So maybe you experience these allergies worse in the spring, or maybe in the summer, maybe a little bit worse in the fall, or maybe if you're super unlucky, all of those times <laughs> you experience some of those issues. And of course, pet challenges can happen all year round too. So basically getting to the mechanic of what's actually happening, that intruder, let's say, gets absorbed into your nostrils, right? If you're breathing it in, let's say, the pollen in the air. Now, there's something in your cells, in your immune system called mast cells. And those mast cells, M-A-S-T, if you want to look it up, they notice the intruder and they explode to prevent the intruder. Now, there's a ton of things going on in said mast cell. Um, there's a lot of other uh, components of the mast cell that are involved in this process. But one of the main ones is called histamine. So these cells release histamine. And that histamine helps prevent the intruder from actually getting further into the immune system. And that leads us to our next over-the-counter side of this conversation with James, which is related to, as you may have guessed, antihistamines, which are commonly found over the counter. Right. So um, histamines basically are causing your, you know, and so it's trying to stop it, stop uh, things from coming into your body. So you're sneezing, coughing it out, you know, your teary eyes, you know, get using your scratchy, tear duct, itchy. scratchy, right, all that. Um, so anti, there are a lot of antihistamine um, over the counter products out there, um, such as 
uh, so tyrosine, um, which is common known as Zyrtec. There is also obviously Benadryl, the pink pill, mm -hmm. um, Allegra, Loratadine, Loratadine there's yeah. a Claritin, you know, so there are a lot of different products out there. The major distinguishment between those products generally are first versus second generation of antihistamines. So Benadryl and Zyrtec um, or Cetirizine, they are under uh, first generation, which, you know, basically um, you get the, the major issue is the drowsiness. Um, mm. the, the drowsiness is a major issue. That's why some people who take Benadryl, when there is, when you have a high or have a really serious allergic reaction, um, when you take a Benadryl, you fall asleep, right. you know, um, you get very drowsy. Uh, uh, Satyrus doesn't happen as much, but some people still have experienced drowsiness with it um, versus the second generation, loratadine or the uh, fexofenadine, uh, which is Allegra, those tend to have a less issue with the drowsiness. Um, right. So they do come in, obviously, pretty safe for children as well. It comes from liquid form for children and then um, uh, pill tablets or even sometimes now dissolvable ones sure. to uh, absorb better. Now, what about, I know there are some those are over the counter. What about the allergy stuff that's behind the counter? What's the really sure. difference there with something you need a prescription for versus something you don't need a prescription so for? So one of the common one that's actually it's common that's behind the counter is uh, Sudafed. <laughs> uh, Sudafed. Um, did is, they steal that from us or did we steal that from them? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so the Sudafed or the Sudafedrin um, has to happen. It works at decongestant and helps to open up your nasal pathway. Um, just like, uh, and so now there's a lot of combo meds out there, um, whether it's Claritin D, anything that's in D, living dog, um, that shows that that's, uh, the pseudoephedrine is in there. Uh, pseudoephedrine works pretty good. Um, it does come in a different um, variations. Um, but the major thing with the pseudoephedrine is that it can make your heart little feel a little jittery. Sure. Um, some people have difficult time sleeping at night. You can take it at nighttime. I definitely have experienced that myself. I try not to take it maybe early evening or later. I try not to take it just because it does have a little bit of a, a stimulant effect. Sure. And all, all of these uh, over-the-counter um, allergy medications works fairly quickly. Uh, generally, the, it's pretty rapid acting and then Pretty sure it kicks in in your bloodstream in, within an hour or so. Mm, okay. So uh, if that's why you know someone, God forbid, have a more of a severe allergy, uh, if you take a Benadryl, which we tend to think is probably the strongest one out war out there at the moment over the counter, it works pretty quickly. Okay. So a couple of things there, I guess. One, what is your main recommendation when it comes to all of that kind of stuff between those standard over the counters that I'm sure everyone is familiar with? And we'll get into some natural recommendations in a, in a minute as well. But out of those, what's your, your go-to? And for any of you watching, feel free to comment and ask any questions. Or if you have experience you know, with allergies, what you typically take to. And we can talk about it further from there. And anecdotally, by the way I see it, some people love certain brands. Okay. Um, I, I can't, it's very difficult to say one works better than the other. Uh, because a lot of people have their, at this point, their preference. Especially if you've been suffering from allergies for a long time. Um, that's either generally the loratadine, um, cetirizine, and the phenovexidine, uh, the, the Allegra Genic, are the first go to purely because of the drowsiness issue compared to Benadryl. Um, when it becomes more of an issue, is that if you are taking it constantly, mm. because it's, it's more of the fact that there are, and again, just like any other medications out there, it has side effects. Sure. And uh, the goal of the antihistamine is to dry you out, right? Because that's what histamine does and does the antihistamine. Right. And then now you know, you're going to dry it out and stuff the nose running, all of that good stuff. Right, right. And if you are adding, for example, now that the fluticasone, the flonase, you know, there's nasal cord that's over the counter now, those are nose sprays that people use that's topical. And guess what? They dry you out too. They will dry your nostrils and some of the side effects. In, in sometimes with the cold spring, such as like right now, um, people turn off the heat and then people have the bloody nose and you know there are many different side effects goes along with that sure. so um i sometimes i feel that some people take it too frequently too frequently um they are not really and diving in they're always just allergy so they just because some you know some of the symptoms are very very common whether it's cold or now it's just covid right i will go over the possible difference between covid symptoms and the allergy a little later on but uh, some people just pop a pill and sometimes that masks, you know, what actually is happening. Sure. 
So something I, that's something that I would definitely talk to a doctor, obviously, or pharmacist about. But keep taking it. You keep catch yourself taking it. So the basic pros and cons of those allergy meds, I'd say, on the pro side, they're very quick acting. Yeah. You'll feel some benefit, some relief quickly, usually. That's right. Now, on the con side, though, like James was alluding to, there are many side effects. So it could be the dried out nose, which could in turn lead to nosebleeds and that kind of stuff. There could be some drowsiness. There could be some brain fog or cloudiness that many of you may have experienced when taking Benadryl or some of those kinds of things. I know personally, I've experienced that myself as well. There is another natural product that we recommend that we've had a lot of patients see success with at the pharmacy. And I actually personally use it myself. I don't experience seasonal allergies too much, but pet allergies, I do. And this product in particular has helped me a lot. And it's the difference between this product and the over-the-counter products that we just talked about is this one is not going to be quick acting. It's not going to provide immediate relief, but if you take it consistently, it will provide long-term sustainable relief in the sense that you won't have as significant a reaction. So before I actually get into that, I do want to talk about a couple of different things that what can you do to somewhat prevent allergies or um, how to kind of find the best time to be out there and exercise and things like that. Okay, especially fair, now. For fair. example, today we're in New Jersey right now and it's raining. Actually, that's the best time. Yeah, sure. Uh, it, it washes away pollen um, and things like that. So a lot of people have less allergic reaction. Um, also, having a mask on certainly definitely helps. So um, especially if during the summer, a lot of people, um, when they, if you have allergy to grass, and a lot of people are mowing the grass during the summertime, and it seems like it's unbearable to walk around sometimes. Um, so masks definitely help. The uh, the K95 and 95 really helps with that. Um, and try to avoid morning time. If the pollen and things like that, what ragweed all seems to be all most frequently or just more prevalent during the morning time. So try to stay away from that if you want to go out for a run and things like that. Now, along with that, as we just talked about before, we were talking about mast cell, how that breaks open whenever it sees an intruder. And so the one, the product that Vince was mentioning was the dehist. The dehist is more so molecular. And the major ingredient from here is actually the quercetin. Quercetin is a great antioxidant. And then there are many, many actually literature and studies out there regarding its um, capability as a mast cell stabilizer. So it helps regulate um, your mast cell to breaking up too frequently. So if you were joining late or forgot what we said earlier, essentially those mast cells are in your immune system. And when they sense an intruder, they burst. And when they burst, they release a bunch of things. But one thing they release is histamine. So technically the other over-the-counter medications that we talked about are reactive. So there's histamine in your body because of that cell bursting. And now you were going to react and take medication to sop up that histamine and kind of stop that histamine. This actually helps to prevent those cells from bursting to begin with. So it's kind of a proactive way. Now, this is the caveat with this product is you need to load up the dosage in your body. So you need to take two capsules three times a day for a week and build up those doses of the quercetin in particular. But once you do that, you hit a maintenance dose phase. And I've done this before. I'm going to visit a friend who has a lot of pets. And I have bad reactions to it sometimes. But before I would go, when I've loaded up on this for a week before, then got there and continued the maintenance through the weekend, it's like night and day when it came to my reaction for how severe the reaction was. Um, We do have a question here on Instagram from Caitlin. So typically, I don't suffer with allergies until they are, unless they're seasonal. I wait until I've developed a sinus infection and take anything. Would it be better to take something prior to it being that bad, even if I'm not suffering at the moment, more preventative? So someone like you, I mean, this is actually a perfect um, option for you to start on. Um, now, granted, if you have allergies, right, and if that causes inflammation in your, you know, trachea, throat, and in your respiratory, uh, respiratory system, it certainly can... Uh, put you at a higher risk of getting an infection. Generally, not, I wouldn't say that like one-to-one related, but there's certainly a possibility of that. So in your specific case, um, taking a dehis definitely can help um, to, and again, as we just said, proactively hopefully help you uh, as a more of a, as a, as a preventative measure um, to stop the, um, the seasonal allergies or prevent some of the seasonal allergies. Now, so these actually has vitamin C, which is again another antioxidant. Um, has bromelain, which helps to increase absorption of the quercetin. 
oxalate does, does a better job of it. It has a uh, N acetylcysteine, which helps with the inflammation of the lung and the so overall respiratory system. So if you are, are someone who gets a lot of uh, allergic reaction um, or allergies uh, to respiratory system, this is probably a good thing to take. Um, Casey on Facebook, yeah, this is a very proactive thing. So it's it's something to help limit the symptoms in the long run. But again, if you have a reaction immediately, this is this is not an immediate reaction type thing like that. It's for a long term proactive preventative kind of product. The over the counter stuff is going to be what you want if you're quickly experiencing a reaction. Right, if you're having a flare up. The other thing I'll say is people who have tried this who said oh, it wasn't working as well. We've asked, did you do the loading dose? They said, ah, no, not really. Well, there you go. That's why it's crucial to do the loading dose on this product first. So that's another caveat. Um, Casey on Facebook uh, said, does this also apply to sinus reactions to temperature changes? That's an interesting question. Um, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't think it's exactly related for that purpose of it. Um, so I'm not sure what you my sinus reaction. I'm assuming you get people get, um, Runny nose, runny nose, kind of and stuff. things like so, that. Yeah. That does have a temperature changes. I, I would, I would actually consider that as a normal response to your, from your body. So if you, I, I, and a lot of times uh, those reactions and temperature changes are very, you know, short. It's very brief a lot of times. So I won't really think like that for that specific purpose. Would you be taking this to prevent that? I really wouldn't do that in that sense. Yeah, I would take your opinion on that over mine, but it doesn't seem like it's the same chain of events in your body that this is sure. helping with you know um okay so any other questions about that feel free to comment if you're watching after the fact or again you can call us here at the pharmacy 201-997-2010 or visit us at gaspersbest.com james did want to talk about one other thing before we wrapped up here today but again if you have other questions fire away james wanted to talk about especially now that we're mid-pandemic still and we, you know, now are going to deal with this seasonal allergy thing. Last year, I'd say, not that it didn't exist, but we were all so freaked out and panicked about everything else that was going on. It was just a different way to look at it. You're welcome, Casey. Um, how would you go about differentiating now that we're a little more educated, that we're a little more aware of the differences, differentiating between, okay, are these allergy symptoms or is this, you know, COVID that I should kind of take more seriously? Right. Um, obviously, there is no clear cut answer on this. However, some of the major things with the allergy symptoms, most people who are suffering from allergy already know, but it's the True. itchiness. You know, if you're itchy, um, you know, tickle in, oh, tickle in the you know, in your throat and a lot of this itchiness or even even on the skin and things like that. Obviously, those are, those are more probably an allergy versus COVID symptoms are more specified sometimes with fever, obviously, number one. I mean, fever can be for any type of infection. It doesn't have to be COVID. Um, and obviously, the, I'm sure at this point, most people heard it um, with the loss of sense of smell mm. or taste. Um, that's one of the big things that's out there um, compared to the allergies. So, um, and again, if you, you know, it's sometimes just easier to say, oh, it's just an allergy or it's not. But if you feel like something, something, if you feel something's wrong, it, it's very possible that something is wrong because a lot of people, some people are forgetting you can't, you can be the carrier of COVID or you may have possible COVID infection while you're asymptomatic. So, you know, sometimes definitely if you ever, if you ever suspect or if you've heard that some of your, your family and friends has been contact, you definitely want to check that out. Cool. Um, is there anything else you want to add before we wrap up here? If there are any other questions, um, if you ask them before we get off, we'll answer live. If not, we'll follow up after the fact. Um, we are actually doing, now that I meant to think of it, a discount on this product this month in the pharmacy and online too. If you enter the code allergy blues, all one word. For this month, there is a discount going on in the DHS too, since it's obviously seasonal and relevant. Um, but any other questions about that, you know, feel free to comment or find us at uh, gaspersbest.com, G-A-S-P-A-R-S best.com. So one last thing before we go, just as a pharmacist, um, a lot of times if you're make, taking a cough medication or cold medication, sometimes they already have antihistamine in it. Hmm. You wouldn't want to double up by taking, I don't know, something cold complete plus uh, another antihistamine that will be doubling up. And some people would take that along with a different nose spray. And, you know, that sometimes gets too much. So definitely, before you make your purchases, especially over the counter, you ask the pharmacist and let them know what you're, what you're taking 
prior on making your selection. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great point. I think, as always, the ultimate point we're trying to make in these things is we do our best to educate our patients, whether online or locally at the pharmacy, too. We want to give you the tools to be able to ask the right questions for yourself, too. So whether it's here or you're at a different pharmacy or somewhere else, you know, these are just some the uh, some key things and pointers to keep in mind. And, you know, when you're at the doctor yourself or when you're at your local pharmacy, whether here or elsewhere, you know, these are things to keep in mind that you should ask to be a more informed patient and to be able to have those higher level conversations with uh, your provider and other practitioners, too. So hopefully you guys found that helpful and useful. And if not, well, I'm sorry. Let us know what we can do better. (laughs) And uh, other than that, thank you guys so much for chiming in today. And we'll see you on the next episode next month, um, Thursday at noon, the third Thursday of every month. That's when we do these, too. If you want to check us live, after the fact, they'll always be up on our podcast page, which you can find on our website um, or here on Facebook and Instagram. It'll live, too. And I will stop talking now. All right. (laughs) Have a good day, guys. Thank you.